Our task is to allow the beautiful life we've designed to flow into existence at the perfect time. If we aren't allowing it, even though it's ready to come to fruition, if we aren't allowing it, then we aren't ready for it. How do we signal these cosmic forces that we're ready? Is it with relentless determination, a focus on action, or is our signal better set to surrender? Today, we're gonna to talk about how to know if we're blocking universal flow, how to know if we're blocking our desires and what we can do to tell universal energies that we are ready. This podcast is all about helping you with your spiritual growth so you can overcome obstacles and manifest your destiny to crystallize all things good, basically to have success on life's journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. So let's get started. Hi there, and welcome. My name is Raimi, like Do Re Mi. I'm a best selling author and creator of the Get Unstuck Revolution. I help extraordinary women just like you dissolve the obstacles in your path so you can bring success to you. Now, let's get started with today's video. Okay, let me jump off the screen here and switch to my laptop. Today, we're talking about the flow of universal energies. We've put a lot of thought into what we'd like to see in our life, but sometimes we simply don't allow it to flow to us. We don't allow the flow. We might have some hidden energy, especially if we're going through an ascension and trying to balance our masculine and feminine energies. Maybe we have a very natural high energy that's quite positive and we don't carry any negative energy at all. It may be that our masculine and feminine energies are out of balance. Either way, we might have some hidden underlying feeling that's giving instructions to the universe that we aren't ready. And then we end up feeling stuck, wondering why things aren't moving along towards success. If you'd like to see success in full abundance along life's journey, and if you're wanting to tap into a greater knowingness and align with the higher consciousness of your infinite self, instead of the lower ego thinking and negative thoughts that push success away, then this is for you. It's time to be unabashedly, unapologetically, happily untethered to ego thinking. It's time to align with the higher energies of our soul's path instead. This episode is for you if you wonder, what is your signature energy? How do you match energies in order to bring something to fruition? How do we signal to the universe that we're ready to receive our desires and not block them? Well, these episodes are about how to find your hidden power when you want to transform challenges into successes. I like to call it the audacity of alchemy, because when we're feeling stuck, it's never the situation that has us stuck. It's our energy about it that's become stuck in anxiety, overwhelm, doubts, worries, frustrations, indecision, and even anger. And often this is because of a spiritual injury that we've experienced, some kind of hidden trauma. So it isn't the pain of our situation, it's the pain of not being connected into the natural energy of who we really are, of being connected to that magical part of us that's a creative vibrational being who can use positive energies to create what we want and bring it into physical manifestation. We can allow our manifestations to materialize and not get stuck in the negative vibrations that block them. These positive energies that we talk about so much are where we find the magic of alchemy because our choice of frequency, our choice of these positive thoughts and emotions can change the course of our journey. All right, let's talk about the flow of universal energies because our task is to allow the beautiful life we've designed to flow into existence at the perfect time. This is our task. These universal energies hear us when we pray, when we meditate, when we ask, when we brainstorm and mind map and all the things we do to identify what we want and draw it into our life experience. We've put a lot of thought into what we'd like to see in our life, but sometimes we simply don't allow it to flow to us. We don't allow the flow. And this is something I personally have been very guilty of throughout my life. It's difficult to let go sometimes. 
but more often than not, I simply haven't been able to find the right energy that will match up with what I want to manifest. And maybe you can relate. All right, I'll give you a quick example. If we're trying to create prosperity, would we match the energy of prosperity? And what exactly does that look like or feel like to match the energy of prosperity? Would you try and match the energy of prosperity or would you match some innate energy that lives inside you that creates prosperity, like some kind of warm up energy? For instance, if your most natural energy is persistence, would you match that energy and then create prosperity from there? Or would you simply align directly with what feels like prosperity? Interesting to think about, right? <laughs> okay, the most important thing to know is that when we feel any negative emotion at all, frustration, anxiety, even panic, when we feel any negative emotion at all, it tells the universe that we aren't ready. If we get in the way of universal flow by falling into negative emotions like worry or angst or struggle, and make no mistake, every negative emotion gets in the way of universal flow. Every negative emotion gets in the way of universal flow. And when this happens, we can end up feeling stuck and wondering why things aren't moving along. So this is huge. Now, on the flip side, I get a lot of questions about negative and positive energies, it's true. And I also get a lot of questions about masculine and feminine energies, because maybe we aren't harboring negative energies or emotions at all. So is it this masculine feminine thing? Maybe we're going through an ascension and trying to balance our divine masculine and divine feminine energies. Maybe it's not a matter of allowing or surrendering at all. Maybe it's a matter of balance. And we'll go into all this a little bit deeper, but either way, no matter what's happening, we very well might have some hidden underlying instruction to the universe that we aren't ready. Okay. So what energy are we offering to the universe? What instructions are we sending out through our own energy? Well, let's look at positive versus negative energies. And let's also look at feminine versus masculine energies. Have you ever considered whether positive energy is feminine energy and whether masculine energy is negative energy or vice versa? Now, being a business owner myself and carrying a fairly high masculine energy, I've been accused throughout my lifetime of being type A, of being controlling, of being bossy, or any number of other invalidating labels. And as women, sometimes we're told that we're too emotional. So these feminine and masculine lines can blur between genders, right? Now, there are theories out there that regardless of our gender, will favor either the masculine or the feminine. But why does this have to be either positive or negative? Well, some theories suggest that we have inside of us a wounded feminine and a wounded masculine, while at the same time we have a divine feminine and a divine masculine that aren't wounded. And these four parts of us are trying to balance. And with each life experience, we have an opportunity for balancing. All right, so maybe we carry a strong masculine energy, and what's most natural for us could be called maybe relentless determination. Well, who's to say we aren't using this absolute best energy to call in what we want to manifest? Is that a negative thing or a positive thing? Or are we just using what's most natural for us? And by contrast, maybe we carry a strong feminine energy, and what's most natural for us is to be in the flow. What's most natural for us is graceful allowing. Well, maybe that's the best place to be. Is it a negative thing because we're surrendering to such an extent that maybe somebody will misjudge us and think we aren't taking responsibility for life at all? Or is it a positive thing because we're using an energy that's most natural for us? Okay, well, for me, I can be in that place of relentless determination and create things left and right if it's a positive energy for me but it may not be a fit for you. If my relentless determination has anger behind it or frustration or control or any kind of negative energy at all, well, then I'm fighting the flow. But if relentless determination for me is aligning with the best possible outcome no matter what, well, that's more positive, right? Can you see the difference? 
my point is, sometimes it isn't just one layer of energy we're working with. What we're looking for is what layer of energy will put us into that space where we can align and allow our manifestations to come to fruition. If we aren't allowing our desires to come to fruition, even though what we want is ready to come to us, if we aren't allowing it, then we aren't ready. So my question for you is, what energy or what emotion puts you into a place where you can allow good things to flow to you? Or is it a combination of energies? And just because I know I'm going to get this question, the balance that I found that works best for me is to first center myself in what I like to call graceful optimism. I center there first and then use relentless determination when I'm ready to take physical world action. In other words, I'm not creating from relentless determination. I'm creating from a more feminine energy of grace and then move into a different, more masculine energy as I'm moving through the physical world. This is what helps me stay in that place of allowing. It helps me stay balanced, but I definitely can't stay in an allowing energy 24 seven. For me, I have to have a balance of both. But as you listen to these concepts today, do what works best for you. All right. The reason I bring this up is because I work with a lot of people who are going through an ascension. And a big part of this process is balancing the divine masculine with the divine feminine energies. Now we assume that a masculine energy means action, power, a warrior type of energy. And we assume that a feminine energy means creativity, vulnerability, and that surrender type of energy. I've got this example up on the screen for you. And this is a slide that I'm borrowing from another episode called Goddess on the Loose, if you want to dive in deeper to the masculine feminine. But we may feel an imbalance of our masculine and feminine energies. We may feel a push-pull within ourselves as we strive to become whole. In other words, does being in the flow mean only the feminine surrender energy? Could being in the flow also mean the masculine energies of taking inspired action, powerful expression, or being a warrior when we're fighting for what we know is right intuitively? (laughs) Or could being in the flow simply mean a balance of both masculine and feminine energies? Combining our masculine and feminine energies together allows motion. And another way of looking at this, it allows us to step into the flow or step into the motion because we now have a balanced energy. So our task is is to allow the beautiful life we've designed to flow into existence at the perfect time. If we aren't allowing it, even though it's ready to come to fruition, if we aren't allowing it, then we aren't ready for it. Our task is to be ready. It isn't an overly masculine or overly feminine energy that keeps us from being ready. It's any negative emotion, whether masculine or feminine. And negative emotions are our signal that we aren't balanced. And if we aren't balanced, we aren't in the place of allowing. We aren't ready. Okay, let's talk more about this idea of allowing. Remember that negative emotions are a sign that we aren't balanced and we aren't allowing. These negative emotions could be frustration, doubts, worries, anxiety, uncertainty, indecision, feeling stuck, and so many more. So as an example, I had a woman at a workshop tell me that she had made a covenant in a past life to never again allow prosperity in her life because people around her were getting hurt because of her uh, prosperity. This was a past life covenant or a past life decision that had followed her into this life. And she had decided it was her own affluence and her own prosperity that was causing this. Now, can you imagine being able to spot a past life covenant Because boy, that kind of promise or decision could really get in the way of this lifetime, huh? So she had this desire in present time for prosperity, but she wasn't allowing it. And everything she was feeling from hesitation to irritation to panic was all a sign that she wasn't balanced and she wasn't allowing prosperity. So I knew she was onto something as she was telling me this because negative emotions tell us that we aren't ready. Negative emotions tell us that we aren't ready. If we can recognize our negative emotions when they come up, we can look for these covenants or patterns or thought processes that aren't serving us. 
having the negative emotions isn't a bad thing. It's a starting point. Now, if you're into past lives, you might enjoy this other example that I have for you, you know, that I have a lot of friends in real estate because I've been an investor for such a long time. And this realtor friend of mine said, it's the funniest thing. I have this client who wants to buy a house. And every time we get close to making an offer, he shuts down, he pulls back and he gives up and it makes his wife crazy. And this friend of mine said to me that he had pulled her aside one day and said, you know, this may sound like I'm a total whack job, but I feel like I was in the military in a past life and I bombed and blew up and desecrated entire communities and families. And I think this stops me from wanting to buy a house. And he was very serious. Now, I'm not asking you to believe in past lives, not at all, but I am asking you to believe that if you're experiencing negative emotions like we've talked about or any kind of imbalance, it's very likely because you have a desire that you aren't allowing for whatever reason, present life or past life. If you're experiencing a negative emotion or imbalance, it's very likely you have a desire that you aren't allowing. So you might be blocking the flow from the universe that's actually trying to bring you your desires. All right. So we have to find a way to be ready because when we experience these negative emotions, we're telling the universe that we aren't ready. These negative emotions are a signal that we aren't ready. So the obvious question is, how do we tell the universe that we are ready? Well, we do that with a balanced, positive energy. We tell the universe we're ready with our balanced, positive energy. The more balanced we are, the more we can be in that space of allowing. It's a balance of masculine and feminine energy that leans into pure, positive thoughts. Let me say that again. It's a balance of masculine and feminine energy that leans into pure, positive thoughts. Our task is to allow the beautiful life we've designed to flow into our existence at the perfect time. If we aren't allowing it, even though it's ready, if we aren't allowing it because we're experiencing negative emotions or feeling imbalanced, well, then we aren't ready. So what we have to do is go in there and balance these emotions toward pure positive thoughts. And so the way to get into that space of allowing is with a balanced positive energy. You've heard me talk about this before, that I don't exactly relate to the idea of surrender. That's just me. I lean more toward the energy of cooperation because for me, surrender is a little too much on the feminine side. It isn't balanced for me. For me, I have to balance that determination, that masculine side with an optimistic surrender. But as you hear me say so often on this podcast, do what works for you. If you feel 100% balanced when you are in a 100% state of flow and surrender, then that's what works for you. I just hear from a lot of you that you're feeling stuck, hopelessly stuck sometimes. And this idea of feeling stuck is a negative emotion. No judgment. I'm just talking about the energy of stuckness, or it may be 50 different emotions about a situation that we're in. And they all feel stuck. <laughs> I can tell you I've been there. So the idea is balance. If we're feeling stuck, then let's reframe that to certainty. If we're feeling frustration, then let's reframe that to possibilities. If we're feeling worried, then let's reframe that to grace. You get to choose how you'd like to reframe any emotion. All right. So I've alluded today that the idea of graceful allowing tells the cosmic forces that we are ready. We're ready to receive, but it could just as easily be relentless determination for a better than expected outcome. It's a balance and you get to choose. Our task is to allow the beautiful life we've designed to flow into our existence at the perfect time. The question is, what energy or what combination of masculine and feminine energies will put you into the space where you're ready? As we empower ourselves toward self-expression and who we are at our core, without the negative thoughts and emotions that can drain us, we're choosing a higher frequency, higher and better thoughts, because our choice of frequency, our choice of more positive emotions, changes the course of our journey. So reflecting back on everything we covered today, how can you apply what you've learned? My suggestion 
is to do a little research and make two columns. In one column, write down what could be considered masculine energies, and then do the same in the right column for feminine energies. Spend a little time, feel it out, and see if you can discover which one energy or emotion is where you can center yourself and be in that place of allowing. Or is it a combination of two emotions or two energies? Because finding this balance is where you can signal to the universe that you're ready. All right. I hope this helps you as you're using the powers of alchemy to transform challenges and obstacles into positive new successes. This podcast is all about helping you have success on your spiritual growth journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. If you still can't get your head around what's got you stuck in life or in business, you can tell me about it. You can send me a question to questions at unlock your hidden power. Com. Or you may not know that you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with your own personal unstuckologist, that's me, by visiting instantbreakthroughsession.com. Well, thanks for joining me today, and I'm wishing you a life filled with all the alchemy you need to bring success to you. Feel free to share this video with anyone you know who's feeling stuck, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.